Ideas TV. Hi, and I'm Bob Resselman. Each week, we focus on the thinking and people behind bright, imaginative ideas and how they've really changed the way the world works. And this week, we're going to talk to Carl Franklin, who's a noted uh, author and uh, software developer and an advocate of the ketogenic diet. But before we talk to Carl, we have to do something, right, Heather? We do. We're going to mention our sponsor, Bob. And our sponsor this week is Security Boulevard. Dot com and is the home of the Security Bloggers Network. That's great. Yeah, I was reading Security Boulevard this week and I came across the article, Rethinking Cybersecurity. It's all about the data, not the malware. And the author had a really good position is that nobody's, there's more people just leaking bad stuff than people trying to assault stuff. So it's an interesting read and I recommend it. But now it's time to move on to our guest for this week, which is Carl Franklin the internationally known author, musician, and software developer. To paraphrase John Box, a consultant at Clear Function, Carl Franklin is a real voice in several different communities. His talent is across different mediums and fields, business, technical, communication, marketing, and music. When you talk to Carl, you get solutions that have breadth across his different backgrounds, as well as depth into the answer. In 2015, Carl was diagnosed with type 2 diabetes. In 2016, he went on a ketogenic diet to control blood glucose. According to Carl, two months later, he was no longer diabetic and he'd stopped taking medications. In six months, he lost 80 pounds. His transformation using the ketogenic diet is truly remarkable. Presently, Carl is expanding his investigations to explore other areas of health and nutrition some of which he's going to share with us today. So Heather, please join me in welcoming to Bright Ideas, Carl Franklin. Hello, Carl. And so Carl, let's begin in the beginning. What is your bright idea and how did it come about? Question is, can fasting heal or help heal a bacterial infection? Wow. And uh, it, it came about because I'm, ever since I went on the, the ketogenic diet, I noticed myself getting more bacterial infections easier. In other words, I've had bacterial infections before, but cuts or scrapes that normally would go away um, weren't healing and they were getting infected. And in particular, I had two or three bouts of cellulitis from scrapes or burns or whatever that just wouldn't heal. And it turned into a cellulitis, which is an infection that happens under the skin. And uh, it, it's red and painful and sore, and it just gets worse and worse and worse. And I've always gone to the doctor and taken, faithfully taken my antibiotics to uh, get rid of it, and that has worked. But, you know, the more I learned about antibiotics, the more scared I was about taking them. I mean, the more you do that, the, the, you just destroy all the bacteria in your body everywhere, good bacteria and bad bacteria, and even um, probiotics in, in repopulating your gut bacteria, for example, it's hard. It takes a long time. And it may, you may lose species of bacteria that you'll never get back. So um, I did some research this last time around. I got a burn on my uh, on the underside of my wrist from uh, a fireplace because I'm an idiot. <laughs> All right. We'll leave it at that. And uh, this burn, you know, I covered it and stuff and it just didn't, it turned into a cellulitis. And I was like, you know, this time um, I'm going to do some research. So I looked around and I had already been um, doing intermittent fasting, which is essentially eating one meal a day or maybe fasting for 24 hours and then eating again or fasting for a couple of days and that kind of thing. When I say fasting, I mean salt and water just fasting, maybe some black coffee. And uh, that was part of my regimen to lower my insulin, which I learned all about that uh, from Dr. Jason Fung and F-U-N-G, and you can just Google him and look up his stuff. His company is IDM, in, uh, uh, Intensive Dietary Management in Toronto, Canada. Anyway, so I, had read, I read a study that said, in mice anyway, which is never a good, you know, should never take a mouse study to be human applicable. 
but in you know it does it, it does warrant further research but there was a mouse study that showed that when if if mice were exposed to a key um to a uh, intermittent fasting regimen that they tended to have more bacterial infections and uh, or get them easier i also had low testosterone and that also could have been a factor in it um so what i decided to then i i kept reading the research and the research showed there was another study that said, you know, the whole, whole adage of starve a fever, feed a cold. Mm -hmm. Well, there's two types of infections, a bacterial infection and a viral infection. And, a, you know, fever is typically a bacterial infection. A viral infection is typically, a cold is typically viral. So it turns out that there is some merit to that. In, in the studies that I showed where they uh, basically fasted, and again, it's mice, but they fasted the same mice with and they did a randomized control trial with the mice so they fasted them and those with a bacterial infection lived those that they gave a viral infection to died and then they reversed it with the same batch of mice you know the same kind of mice they gave half of them a viral infection and half of them a bacterial infection they reversed and exactly the opposite happened so when you feed a cold uh, a viral infection the mice survived, and when they fed them, uh, when they fasted the ones with the viral infection, they died. And the opposite was true of bacterial infection. And so I thought this was really interesting. Now, granted, this is not definitive science, right? This is just this is a mouse study. So it doesn't apply. It, it could completely not apply to humans. However, I thought it was interesting enough to try. So I documented the whole thing and I basically fasted for three or four, for four days at first. And I took before and after pictures and every day it was getting clearer and clearer and clearer. However, there was a confounder. I was also taking an androgel, which is a testosterone supplement at the same time. And even though I had low testosterone and the gel was bringing it up to normal levels, you know, it's not like high testosterone can be, um, it's not like high testosterone. It was normal levels of testosterone. So I just, I want, I, it just bugged me, right? So I stopped the experiment after four days. I stopped taking the androgel, the testosterone, and I started eating. And I noticed that it started to get more red and it started to get a little bit more red. And so then um, after, th I think, three or four days of eating, I fasted again without the testosterone and it went away. Wow, so let, let, let me ask you a question. Let me just interject for a minute here. Yeah. Because um, I, I've heard a number of people support the notion of fasting as a way to address a mul multiple issues. Right. One of the problems that I've had is like I used, would want to fast just for a day just to clean stuff out. But sure. the fact is I get hungry. And, yep. I, and it's like the hunger becomes amplified almost. Yeah, you know? that's, right. I, that's right. So how, how do you address that? Sure. Uh, so the, hmm, where do I start? Okay. So the, the ketogenic diet is what I use to cure myself of diabetes, type 2 diabetes. And hundreds of other people I know have done the same thing and lost dramatic weight. Uh, it doesn't come back on. Um, metabolic rate goes up. Uh, no exercise, no deliberate exercise anyway, and, and it's just like a wonderful therapy. Now, what happens is, um, first of all, fasting is sort of like the ultimate ketogenic diet. Fasting is, um, it, it, it does the same thing. It puts you in a state of nutritional ketosis. And that means that you're burning your body fat or the fat that you eat, in the case of the ketogenic diet, for fuel, and you don't have any incoming glucose. Now, every, they're, they're critics of this and people who are afraid and say, well, you will kill yourself if you don't have glucose. Your brain needs a certain amount of glucose in order to survive. That's right. However, we have this wonderful thing called the liver. And the liver creates new glucose with a process called gluconeogenesis, just enough for your brain and your blood cells and your eye cells, your, your kidney cells. There are certain cells in your body that need glucose, whether you're eating it or not. And your, your, your liver makes it on demand, okay? So that is the backdrop for what happens when you fast. When you do a ketogenic diet or you fast, and most dramatically when you fast, 
your body switches. You, it's like going from gas to diesel or diesel to high test, right? Your body switches fuel sources from glucose to fat. And if you have plenty of body fat like me, you, you, you eat it. You know, your body eats the fat and it burns it for fuel. But it can only do that if your glucose is low, right? So you, you, you dramatically reduce or completely cut all the sugar that you eat. What, do, what it does is it triggers a switch called mm -hmm. insulin. So insulin is what happens, your pancreas secretes it in response to glucose that you eat, all right? If right. you don't eat any glucose, your pancreas does not secrete insulin. Now, when insulin is high, and it doesn't have to be that much glucose, it can be 50 grams of glucose. It, it can be a slice of bread. That's enough. Say, give me an example of like what you eat for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Well, I will in a second, uh, okay. but um, yeah. So when your glucose is, and when your insulin is high and it doesn't, ha it could be in response to one slice of bread or a couple of crackers, that's all it takes. Your insulin goes up, that's a switch that you're burning glucose for fuel. When it's down, you're burning body fat. So it's a switch. Now, the reason that you feel hungry is because you're converting to fat metabolism at the same time that you're, uh, you know, at, all at once, like, whew, right? Your body doesn't know how to process fat yet. You're burning fat and you're releasing ketones into your bloodstream and your organs and cells don't quite know how to take it up. So you get hungry, your body's calling for more food and more energy. So it takes about, of ketogenic eating, it takes about three or four weeks to become fat adapted so that your cravings go away and all of that. But if you're fasting, it takes about three days, and, but it's pure torture. If you go from glucose to, uh, to fasting, you're going to get really hungry. Now, there is something that we know can help, salt. When your insulin is high, your kidneys retain salt and electrolytes. And that's the state of most of us walking around today. But when your insulin is low, your kidneys flush sodium and with it, potassium and magnesium. And so people don't realize that they have to have about two teaspoons of salt a day when they're fasting or even when they're eating a ketogenic diet, but you get a lot of it from food. Two teaspoons a day is what's required in salt. Right. So most right. people don't know that. And so then they fast and they, oh my God, I'm hungry. If you take some salt, it will, it will make that quell, it will quell that, right? So it's difficult to fast without first doing a, a ketogenic or high fat, moderate protein, low carbohydrate diet. There's one last thing that I wanna say, and that is if you have a bacterial infection, go see a doctor, all right? Don't do, I got my doctor's blessing to do this experiment, but you don't do that. Go to a doctor. If you wanna try it, make sure the doctor knows. So when you're starting, bacon and eggs are your friend. Bacon and eggs and put some butter on them. If you're going to eat meat, moderate amount of protein, the recommendation is one to one and a half grams of protein for every kilogram of lean body mass, which is what you would weigh without any body fat. So it's generally 60 to 80 grams a day, depending on, depending on that. So it's not all that much. So you eat a couple, you know, eat some bacon and eggs. Maybe you have a little burger. At lunchtime, maybe you have a you know, piece of fish or something like that. But the thing that most people don't do is they don't put enough fat on their food. And so more fat means less hungry. And, right. and when you're starting this, if you ate nothing but pure butter, your hunger would go away a lot faster. But most people don't do that. Right. Right. So this is great. Actually, I, I'd love to talk to you more. We have to start doing like an after hours. I think after yeah, hours, right. after hours, right? Bright Ideas TV, after hours, grownups only. But are we coming to the end? So we have to go soon. But we, we're, we are going to be here next week, right, Heather? We are. So we are here every Friday except for holidays at 3 p.m. Pacific and 6 p.m. Eastern. So and we'll next come back next week. Right, and next week we're gonna have Kim Schmidt, who is the uh, CEO of Data Leader, and she's gonna talk about her upcoming book, Analytics for Everyone on AWS. So, I'm Bob Resselman. And I'm Heather Wetzler, and please join us next week for Bright Ideas TV.